Yes. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. It's the Sunday night webinar, last one in January, January 28th. This is Web 203, in case you're counting. And they are, of course, all the numbers are on the Teacher Resource Center page. So you can find them there if you need them. Or if you do run into any problems whatsoever with credit or whatever, let us know so we can assist you. And uh, with that, we're going to get started. I'm Gene Clubago. I'm Roger Carroll. As usual. And? I usually am, yes. Start. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Okay, uh, if you don't mind, Raj, I have, I, I don't know, uh, if I, if you don't mind me starting out here. Well, that's uh, our usual. Uh, well. Yeah, and I know, if I, my, my, there we go. Hey, here's the thing, uh, well, let me, this is, notice this screen. This is my first thing. I don't know if you can see this very well, this eh, previous picture. You'll notice this is Microsoft Word, and over here, the orange, yellow says dictate. Okay, this is a new feature coming out in Microsoft. And if I could just kill this show and get rid of it, uh, I gotta hang on one second. I know I, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth a little bit. I hope you don't mind. There was a, a, an article came out from Microsoft and it's very, uh, very interesting. And uh, it is on my uh, flipboard, I probably once or twice. But uh, they have uh, put out some really great updates and innovative ideas in Office 365. And one of them is, of course, is, you can see the little active here. They, I think, they've taken the dictation in Office uh, that we talked about, the one from the garage, uh, Microsoft Garage, and I think they're including it into the uh, Office 365. But the one we have now was only available in Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. But now you're going to find out that it's going to be in Word, Word Online, PowerPoint. Outlook Desktop, OneNote for Windows 10, and OneNote Online. And in more than nine languages. Now, the one we had had like 40, but I think they're going to do that. And Raj, I, I think uh, the reason I sent that to you, uh, there's going to be some, I think, some new updates for the immersive reader that uh, you uh, do so much with and help us out so much with. But show a little uh, bit about it later, yeah. Yeah, but it looks like it's going to be it's coming to even more platforms. It says it's going to come on available on Word. Yeah. Uh, OneNote and, you know, things like that. So that'll be cool. So, you know, just, a, you know, this is a good article. You know, again, you might want to take a look. You can look down some of these uh, uh, things here. New stickers, math calculator, interactive math calculator in uh, OneNote. I see, again, uh, I saw all this stuff and I got all hyper. And I went to my office uh, to Word, and it wasn't there. And so what I did was I said, hold it here. You know, something's wrong. And um, I found this quote from one of their articles. They are sometimes rolled out over a period of time. So if you have Office 365 work or school account, it may depend on your organization settings, and we may have to look into that, Raj. But we're going to eventually get all of these new features, okay? Don't worry, it's on its way, it says. So pretty soon we will have that, okay? Just, uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. Another thing that um, I got another little article about, let me just kill this thing, was, let me minimize if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, the Microsoft whiteboard. I think, oh, I, I don't know. Roger, I think you probably, the was a week you were off that we talked about this a little bit. This is Microsoft whiteboard. And I think if you look at the name on it, it says preview, okay? It isn't perfect yet, but you can go to the Microsoft store and download it. 
and it is getting better. Okay, they fixed it since I previewed it a few weeks ago, and it might be something that you might want to work with at home to see if it's something you can use in school because you could use it on your smart board pretty easily, and it you know it's it's it might be a little bit easier than working on your smart board. Basically, this is the whiteboard, and it has several nice options. See, that doesn't show anything until you go to the finger, click finger, thinking on, and now you can color, you can erase, things like that. You can just write on it, you know, if you wish. And you can just pick a, a color and write. That's one of the things that you can do, of course. Now, uh, if you click on the right click on it, a little tab will open up where you can insert a document. Okay. You can insert a picture from your files. I'm not going to do that right now. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not a document. This is a um, a, t a note, a, a sticky note like that you can move around. That, that then you can then move around, okay? Uh, and this is if you want to take something either from the screen or a picture of yourself. I'm not going to click on this because it would open up showing me, and I really am not in a mood for this, and I, I don't want to scare you tonight. One other thing that you can do is go down here. There is the little magnifying glass, and when that opens, it says right here to search the web. This is weird. You can't type in there. You have to write. I hope that's close. Oh, it found rows, okay? And you can just insert. Okay, now that's kind of okay. You can play with the whiteboard, but now uh, let me close this if I can. Okay, what's nice about this, if the kids are using it, they can collaborate and you can share, invite, create by sharing a link, invite by email. People can go in and you can work together on it. So this is a place where people can get together. So and work you can on it. Share that with me right now. I could. Go ahead. Uh, uh, let's see if I can. Uh, I don't know. What does that say? Sharing link. Okay. Uh, Raj, how am I going to do this? Email it? Yes. Okay. Well, Google, I'm going to. Look out. Because I've got it running on my surface. Okay. All right. Well, I've got to go to my school account. Well, just for no, purposes. Yeah, this is okay. Sure, you're going in here. Go here. Okay, uh, I got stuff in the way here that I have to move because of the. Uh, okay. You got to read your email. I got to empty it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, real. Okay. Okay, there's the link. Oh, uh, okay. Oh I, oh, I didn't. Uh, I'm going too quickly. Oh, take your time. There we go. We are done. Okay, you should have that. And let me go back to my board here. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let me. Oh, by the way. This little gadget here is kind of cool because if you want to get rid of something, you just draw a square around it. Oh, I thought it. Yeah, that's how you did it. Or you can go here and do that. But I'm sure that I thought that erased. Oh, there. Then you just do that. Okay. Well, I, that's I've got I'm... your screen on my screen. Okay, go ahead and try doing something to it and see if it shows up. Okay, finger finger licking is on. Okay, yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, see? 
Now it says GK though. I don't know. That's interesting. So you're drawing. So you're drawing. This is Roger drawing. So we are collaborating. Now, what if I took a color and started? Yeah. And my my picture is on my <laughs> a little icon. Okay. Yeah. Why does it say GK though? And then it goes away. Well, interesting. We're going to have to check that one I out. Think I think we would mind. be doing more serious collaboration than this. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, yes. And, uh, but I'm just saying, this is another way kids could get together to work together to design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I could say, I didn't like that. I could, you could say no. Or, like, oh. or. Oh, uh, yeah. We could play. Uh, okay, yeah. I, why? Well, I don't have a pen here. I guess. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Oh God, you could have the kids playing tic tac toe. Okay. Oh, the kids could play hangman. Hangman. Yeah. Sure. In another universe. Yeah, on the computer. How's that? I mean, we've Save got paper. whiteboards in the classroom. Sure. But we don't collaborate on them. Um, yeah. And this that would allow you to collaborate, and also I and I think you, the, just using this on a whiteboard might be a little yeah. bit cleaner too, because if you bring up the notebook page, sometimes it's a little more difficult to just write on that. But that's kind of cool. But I so I just thought, in thought the was, moment yeah. that you were discussing it, I was able to download it and launch it mm. on my uh, Surface uh, device, my tablet. Yeah, it's, it takes just moments. It, that's all moments, and then. Did it ask you to log in? No. Some well, you might be logged into your school account already. I'm but already. It may, yeah, I have Office uh, 365 running. On yeah, it so I'm that may that may be the reason. If it's stuff. not, yeah, yeah. If it's not, it may ask you to log in with your school account. Yeah. Or I think I could. I think I logged in with my other account also. Well, anyhow, I got the, whatever. I got the link, and I'm logged in. It, it really doesn't okay. matter. But anyway, no. you're very cool. And I think it's in the preview mode. I think they're going to update it a little bit, and then they're going to say, hey, we're ready. Okay? Yep. All right. Well, let's say you know, just a, a quick thing. I have one more thing I'd like to show, Raj, if I may, and it's fun. You know what we got to do, Gene, before we leave this thought is oh, okay. get what? how many people can collaborate at a time. On this. There's a video... You know, we're going to have to check that out. But there was a video that I watched where there were in four or five okay. doing it. So I think there, I don't know if there is a, you know, a, a number. And I would imagine it's limited somehow. But uh, that is a good question. We may have to call up Mr. Gates tomorrow and ask him. Well, call up Mr. Glahey and tell him to sign in and get <laughs> and do okay. it as well. Okay. But anyhow. He's, Gates is uh, retired, though, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, he's earned. Anyhow, uh, I was just trying to be somewhat stupid, I, and, I, and I'm excellent at that. I found out. So anyhow, yeah. So that there's that. Hey, I found out something today that was fun, and it might be useful in a number of different ways. Okay, it has nothing to do with any program, unfortunately. Well, I guess that we have on our computer at the moment. And it started out with this article I got. Three more ways to use wheel decide. And I said, what the <clears throat> is wheel decide? So I went there and I read this. Developing narrative competence, doing homework, all this stuff. And I said, I got to look at this. What is wheel decide? And it's kind of a cool thing. It's in its infancy, if I may use that term, because... Uh, well, there are a few unfinished bits. Okay, here is the site. And basically, it's a wheel that you can click to spin, you know. Right now, you'll see that it's a number of words. Okay. Well, that's because I created this with vocabulary words. And it's a real easy thing. Uh, what I did, just to show you a, another version of it, 
in my Sunday night webinar page. I didn't know where to stick it. A great way for using Wheel Decide, I wrote down all the kids' names in my class. It's a great way to pick kids. Roger, you've been picked. Oh, I bet on red. I lose. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's not that game, Roger. Oh, not that game. never mind. But see, I mean, it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, you can you, not, you know you can embed it very easily and what it is is it's a place where you can modify the wheel see uh, okay I am going to clear the choices from here that's the one I just okay modify the wheel okay now I can either type in names here but if I have a list I can type just paste a list well just to show you how to do it Here's a fourth grade vocabulary list. Let me just grab a bunch of words here. Well, I guess they want to go over here. All right, we'll go down this list. Okay. We're doing vocabulary with the kids. So I'm going to copy those. I'll just go back to there. Paste list. Add choices one per line. Paste. Add choices. Now, I'm going to take, I had a couple of spaces, blank spaces that I'm going to take out. I can just click those, take those out, and, okay, I can give it a title, and hit Apply Wheel Changes, and there it is. Now, I can play it right here if I wanted to. Okay, it says vocab, that's what I typed. Here's the word, here are the words. You could do that right in class. Now, the problem that arises is this. They are working on ways to save it. And right now, down at the bottom here, somewhere, where is it? Do they have it? Okay, apply wheel changes. Somewhere in here, it will tell you, oh, log in to save wheels on Facebook. No way. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not a Facebook uh, participant uh, right now, and I'm not putting it down or anything like that, but I don't do Facebook. So I said, hmm, there's got to be a different way. Well, if you're interested, you could embed it. That's what I did when I did it here. This is called embedding. And we've talked about that before, and I won't run through it now, but let me say this. If anybody is interested in the wheel and embedding it in one of your web pages, send us an email. I can show you how to do it in no time flat. It's yeah. We're going to touch on that later a little bit, too. Oh, okay, good. Uh, okay, there see. is a final way of doing it right now. I went to their notes and they said they're working on better ways but the best way I found is to go up here copy it okay and I am using Google Chrome so I go down to Google Chrome I go down to more tools I click add to desktop okay I have clicked that and now, if I go to my desktop with a little bit of luck, there it is up here, right there. Okay? So, whenever I want to play it, I could just click on it, and it will take me there. Okay? Now, if I want to even go in and change the vocabulary, I can do that and just save it again. It's a cool little game. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of interesting. and. If I can get back here a second, where am I? So when you copied your list, yeah, vocabulary list, the only thing that yeah. was separating the items in the list was the vertical spacing. They said one per line, yeah, oh. yeah. And you notice they had the spaces there. It put those spaces in, too, so that, that's why I that, took those, those out. Those are the blank. Okay. Yes, exactly. But I'm thinking mm -hmm. of, I mean, it's great for review. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of, uh, a, a quick uh, review of math facts. Where was that? And, and time. Oh, uh, I mean, gets response. Yeah, there was, and I'm not sure where. I, oh boy, 
there was a list of stuff you know that you could do it with uh with well anything you uh, could do in a list wheels you know with it you know it's yeah. different things you could do you know and it was really kind of an interesting thing i know there you know they have those little guys on uh notebook and that but this one seemed a lot better and i think they're going to fix it so the saving will be a lot easier uh, they're working on it, and I think it's fairly new. Oh, by the way, last thing, uh, if I may go back to it, they do have, uh, boy, uh, where am I? Can I just get into wheels? Oh, there it is. Uh, they do have uh, a bunch of wheels that you can go down to education and so forth. You can pick other wheels and go into wheels from, the favorites of 2017 and, you know, things like that. And you might find, yeah, people have put in a lot of things uh, that, you know, you may not uh, want to use, but there may be some that you might be able to take and modify and use on your own too. Don't invent the wheel again. Uh, reinvent the wheel, but, Just you know, embed it's it. Uh, embedded. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, uh no, it, it, oh, I didn't. I just didn't notice this before, and I just read Wheels is popular on Twitch and YouTube. So you might want to. I may have to go to YouTube uh, and check it out. And maybe uh, Raj, I'll let you have the screen, and I'll go check that out real quickly. How's that? Okay. See if I we can find some more ways. I just answered a question here. Oh, okay. Want to look at it? Sure. As it's uh, behind it. It's it's getting the download for a whiteboard. But it oh, just, uh, just in the really? micro, in the Microsoft Store. Okay, yeah. Here, can I show them real quick? Here's what I did. I went to the where the heck is the store? I think this is it. All right, there it is, right there. But here's what I did. Uh, I went to. I went Microsoft, and I'm sure this is what you did. It's exactly what I did. Yeah, and I just did this, and it shows up down here. Yep. That's what and I did, Dave. Then you can download it and launch it, and it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine yeah. is installed already, of course, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I did it. Yeah. I put the Microsoft Store, I made that, uh, I pinned it to my taskbar. Yeah, I'm yeah. Now, uh, there. I'm not sure, Raj, and, and we've talked about this, whether the Microsoft, whether you can download and install anything from the Microsoft Store on your school laptops. Some people seem to have that ability, and some people don't seem to have that ability. I have not had that ability. Well, I could not I put whiteboard a, on my school one. I have a second here. Well, that's in... Um See, it is an installation, so it may not work. Excuse me one second while I cough. Thank you. You're welcome. I, uh, I'm just, yeah, I, I, I don't I'm know on if you my could. district laptop right now. Just, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to just, mm -hmm. if, and I, you know, I seem to remember we talked about this, and some people were available or able to do that and I could not let's see. but anyhow whiteboard let's see let's see what happens it's uh it, it, it's there I'm gonna see if I can download that get it so far I think it depends on the on the app but again this is just downloading it hasn't let me install it yet on my uh Mm -hmm. Laptop, but it's downloading and it's installing and it wants me to launch. It's calling mm -hmm. it the preview version, but I think. Yes, it's like that's it's right. It. That's correct. It's still, uh, mm -hmm. and you can pin it to your start menu. You can do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. Wow, look at this. I just You're, went to oh, Wheel Decide. And it said your admin has disabled sign in for whiteboard. When I got to uh, the launch, it took me right to that thing. So we're going to have to mutiny. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. 
got all the way to the install, but it will not let me. Line. Oh yeah, they they haven't they haven't agreed to allow that to be yeah. put on the computers yet. Except lastly, like, again, I'm right. talking district yeah. laptop, not any of your personal yes. devices. Yes, yes, you can put it on your home computer. Uh, yeah, and, and that's kind of cool, and you know. It might be worth. I, I think that eventually, again, it will be. Well, I, I think uh, the point awesome. we make over and over and over again is we, yes, you, the teachers, have to get these things in their hands, yeah. get familiar with them to see whether or not it fits their style yeah. and, and so on. Yeah. Uh, but if we continually block these things, yeah, well, our progress yeah. is very limited. Yeah, there are some uh, videos here on Wheel Decide. I went to uh, YouTube. There are a whole bunch of them. Okay, here's a tutorial. It was uh, put up two we two years ago, and here's another some videos. Okay, and you know, but it's got how to use it and so forth and so on. Quite a few. So anyhow, I think I've talked enough, Raj. Uh, I didn't really mean to do that so long but thank you and uh, I'm sure you have some good stuff so why don't I switch over to you okay you should have it I don't know what screen we're seeing here let's uh, start. let's start with uh, that uh, it's a PowerPoint screen Yes, okay, because I had some stuff in front of it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was re reviewing your great stuff, too. Okay. Um, okay, we're good. Gonna, we're good. Going to replay some stuff that's been going on uh, district-wise, uh, and this is what a, it's kind of a uh, modified PowerPoint that I was using for some presentations, and I want you to see uh, what's going on uh, district-wise. We are at the very beginning of coming up with a new uh, state requirement for submitting uh, an instructional technology plan. Very different from what we've been uh, doing the last number of years. I think it's just really kind of it's an evolution, not a revolution for what's going on. But it's, it's kind of like a, um, you know what a zero-based budgeting is where you justify anything and everything in your budget, or in this case, uh, the plan. So uh, I'm going to show you wh where we are with some of this. And we've taken our basic motto uh, within the district, and now we are looking, because of one-to-one, -one, because of uh, a whole lot of accessibility, now we're looking at, and, you know, briefly demonstrated here tonight with the whiteboard capabilities. Uh, it's wherever and whenever learning. And we've talked about in the past, uh, this is almost cliche anymore. Are you a digital immigrant or are you a digital native? If you are in this audience tonight, you are a digital immigrant. And uh, maybe in one sense, everyone is going forward the only difference being in say the attitude and the amount of comfort uh, our students have with anything new that you know smacks of uh, technology so uh, I have a, uh, a 98 year old mother who with a, with not all the dexterity can maneuver around in a, her iPad with it I have a four-year-old granddaughter who could give lessons in all of this stuff. And I'm sure we could all point to a similar, um, you know, experiences in our life. You talked to the, at the beginning, Gene, before we started, and David, uh, kind of like in the, um, on the green room of the pre-show, if on the left is probably something more akin to, you know, our touching of technology going back through a at when we started teaching or for many of you perhaps in your classroom from uh, oh very simply uh, yeah um, well this this is even a more modern than the one I was using a film strip projector 
and you had to tune the, uh, you had a, uh, a long playing record album with a voiceover or a narration of whatever was being projected. And it was in tune with a uh, film being processed through. And I, actually the ones I think probably that we're familiar with, Gene, um, mm -hmm. you would hear a beep and advance the slide. Beep, mm -hmm. advance, beep, advance, listening to a narration. Mm -hmm. 16 millimeter uh, film projectors. Uh, we, if you're lucky to get five or ten minutes before it jumped off its sprocket and you had to rethread it, uh, I can remember watching and trying to show uh, versions of Johnny Tremaine and Old Yeller, <laughs> and it would took days to get through it just yeah. because of the antiquated equipment. Probably the biggest revolution was the overhead projector. Then we moved quickly to Remember these TV carts? They're probably still around in uh, some schools and so on. Uh, down here, the very first, I think the very first, probably a second generation word processor down here. Yeah. The first one go, yeah. being a pencil with an eraser. Um, or, and what a revolution, a erasable ink made in our classrooms. And mm -hmm. this, is, this is where we stored our writing to, obviously, giant leap forward to pretty much the standard in every classroom uh, in our experience in the district and in, in many districts, you know, everywhere. This is what is now probably baseline for uh, a lot of classrooms and technology and so on. Now we we're talking about Office 365. And uh, again, it, a lot of people don't understand that it, Office 365 is available to anyone. Any, If you have a wallet and a computer, you can buy Office 365. And then what it is, is and we'll over, overstate this, it's a subscription service to not only the basic Microsoft Office suite of tools, but to a whole host of other possibilities and other tools and other programs online. The key word is online. And you can buy a Office 365 subscription for oh, a range of prices depending on where you get it. If you get it yeah. uh, you know, at uh, Best Buy or online, buy the online subscription online, Office Max or uh, wherever. For anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars, and that's a yearly subscription. Yeah, Raj, you, may I inter interrupt? Sure. Because we just did this this week, and we checked everything out. The best place to go is to Microsoft itself, and because you can be sure that you're getting the correct product. There are a couple of places out there that will say they're selling Office 365, but it's not. And well, the cost, the cost right. is, uh, for a one-year subscription, for a single computer, it's sixty-nine ninety-five. Yeah. This the reason, uh, Raj, you were talking subscriptions, and that's good because you then get the updates as they come out each month. I was or just whenever. about to talk about that. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then I, I'll, I won't say anything. Okay. But uh, then the final thing is, if you want a five subscription, you know, if you have like more than one device or you know you have kids and they want it and so forth five subscriptions are 99.95 yes a year a year yes and then uh the, the so what is the basic difference you can get a subscription and as gene uh, mentioned that means you get any and all upgrades updates latest features mm. that we are just you know on a treadmill trying to keep pace with uh, we have, because of our association with the school district and teachers and so on, we have an Office 365 subscription as a benefit as part of our working environment. And we have the, a, pro, a fairly high level of uh, the subscription service, Pro Plus, mm -hmm. I think it is, with a, a number of features beyond what you even see here. And uh, permission to download that to there's a total of five installs 
and as we've said over and over again, one of your five installs is the one that is delivered to you on your school district laptop. So beyond that, you can download, uh, you can have, well, you can get Office 365 on 100 machines. You just can't download the uh, desktop installed versions on more than five total devices. And the question uh, often gets uh, asked, well, okay, what happens when your subscription runs out? What happens if you're a student and you graduate? What happens if you leave the district for whatever reason? Retire, whatever. Um, your subscription runs out. It doesn't erase itself off of any of your devices. Of course, one you'll be turning back in. But what it does is uh, it disables entity, any editing privileges or anything that's going on. You can view and print, and that's basically it, when your subscription runs out. The difference being if you purchase the full own versions of Microsoft Office, Word 216, PowerPoint 216, Excel 216, Access 216, and so on, you have the full current version of that forever, but you don't get the updates. So we've been on a number of machines, you may still have Office 203. Some of you may have 207 or 210 or 213 and so on. They don't get updated. What gets updated are what comes with your Office 365 subscription. And well, we're urging people to take advantage of this, even if you only use the basics here, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, more than likely Word, and PowerPoint. But where we're going is beyond that. What else is the benefit, the true benefit? And we kind of hinted <coughs> on it, uh, tonight a little bit with some of these tools that allow you to collaborate within the ordinary installed version of Microsoft Office. You don't get to do that. You get to maybe attach a Word document to an email and share it that way, but you certainly can't collaborate on it. You couldn't do any of those silly little things we started doing with um, whiteboard and so on. This is what I'm talking about installing the desktop up, uh, applications. Now, many of you have done this, perhaps uh, a number of you have yet to do this. And what we're, we're talking about the desktop applications, we are talking about the actual Microsoft Word 2016 and across uh, the board here. And you can manage those. Now, there is a difference between one version and another version. The, um, the full, uh, highly enabled Word 2016 is down here. This is the installed version. This is the online version. You'd have to pay pretty close attention to uh, really appreciate any differences, but I think the word is robust. The downloaded installed version of 2016 has every bell and whistle that comes with Office. Uh, Microsoft Word 2016. And you notice, uh, look, look at what's packed in here versus what uh, is packed in here. Can you live one without the other? You certainly can. Probably 95 or better percent of what you would want to do in a Word document, you can do in the Word online. You can do that and more with some of the basic features that comes with and built into your Office 2016. There's the, the dictation that we were talking about earlier. That's going to be 
just an automatic part of it. This is a, a screenshot of the uh, after I've downloaded uh, the dictation uh, add-in here, but it's going to be uh, you know available all over the place. As Gene mentioned, it's in Outlook now and in PowerPoint, but it's going to be all over the place because it's, there's just a high demand and uh, you know people want to use it. Here we are. This is the PowerPoint online. When you are in Office 365 and you click on the PowerPoint icon, it will tell you what you're on. You are in PowerPoint online. If you open it from your desktop, the installed version, it's just PowerPoint. And again, the differences are in all of the features that are available uh, and so on in one versus the other. Another couple of the items that come to you on um, your online. In fact, you could get some of these things for free right now. You can get OneNote. You can get Office 365 for free. If you're a student and so on, you have to jump through a couple of hoops, but you can get that. I do not know about the uh, install features and so on. Uh, I don't want to talk about Sway. We, we, we've we done that. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is an example of Sway. We'll come back to that uh, another time. The big reason to get into Office 365 in the classroom with your students is using OneNote. OneNote is a way to uh, track keep tabs, to have everything online, saved in the cloud, and so on. And the huge thing, and Dean, Gene mentioned it a couple of times, this is becoming really, really powerful. What you can do with a feature called learning tools. Learning tools all came out of the garage. And I, I think, Gene, you Figure out why they call them garage projects beyond what they say. Either than they just get together and work on stuff like they, you know, they were working on a car in the garage, that kind of thing. I am that would be on my only guess. I think it goes a little beyond Microsoft. Oh, okay. I think it goes back to Steve Jobs and the home computer being invented, created. Oh, in it would be the garage with yeah, all so that that's brainstorming what... stuff. Uh -huh. Uh, learning tools, okay. and I've mentioned this before, uh, came from something called uh, Microsoft. They call it a hackathon. It's mm -hmm. like the garage. It's every uh, uh, year, it's almost an event at Microsoft headquarters where they just give their programmers, their idea people, free reign to brainstorm and come up with ideas. Gene's showed us the uh, Microsoft Garage website, the things that are have been put out there, things that they're working on, and then they just kind of crowdsource it. They don't really know how something's going to take off, like they did with learning tools, and in particular, something called the Immersive Reader, which is now in built into Microsoft Word Online, the uh, installed version in OneNote and so on. I'm going to just take a second to uh, remind you what that looks like. This is a slide that came out a couple of uh, days ago, maybe last week, and it talks about learning tools and its uh, general availability across the different platforms. OneNote, which I just talked about, OneNote for the desktop, OneNote Online has the feature called Read Aloud, and you can do word, line, highlighting, and so on as text is read by a well, computer robot voice. It's available in OneNote Desktop Online, uh, the Win 10 app, and OneNote on your iPad if you have that, and in Word Online, the Pro Microsoft Word program. The desktop version. If you have a Macintosh, it's available there. The Microsoft Word on the iPad version. In 
Outlook uh, and, and so on, and in Office Lens, which I'm just going to mention here and then come back to that in uh, a little bit. And then all the other things, these are all the things right here are features of the learning tools of the immersive reader. It will read text and highlight text line by line. You can change the spacing between words, the spacing between lines, and the size of the font. You can have it read and break up words in syllables. You can have it designate uh, the major parts of speech. You can focus a line at a time, and it can be dictated to, and then a student could uh, dictate a passage, or uh, if they're working on a paragraph, into uh, the immersive reader, and it can be read back to them. One of the big things that we've always said, certainly Gene and I and anybody teaching language arts to kids, you're going to pick up a whole lot more when you're editing your own work if it's read to you. If you read it out loud, you have a whole different perception of uh, the composition and so on. So, And notice across going left to right here, these features are working their way into more and more of the Microsoft uh, tools. You get started with uh, OneNote Online. This is a hyperlink. I'm going to come back to that. And if you're not using OneNote, let's get start, starting to use OneNote. And here is a slide that shows you the support. Gene and I are pretty familiar with uh, this. Is the Microsoft uh, Educator education.microsoft.com and we couldn't have a, we'd need a whole nother hour to talk about the different things uh, and by way of support that this Microsoft community provides there are trainings there are courses there are resources there's something that we've got to get turned on in our district it's called Skype in the classroom and right now, I don't know what the reluctance is. I just might be more a technical support for it. But there are some, there's a whole host of things called mystery Skypes that kids in the classroom, you don't have to pay for uh, virtual field trips anymore. They're available through the Skype uh, and uh, Skype in the classroom feature. And a whole ton of, uh, well, let me go back here. A whole ton of other things that uh, is available to every teacher by way of using these tools. And it really kind of starts with OneNote. This is just a, a quick screenshot of the Immersive Reader. And I uploaded, I found a little uh, a book called uh, Good Night iPad just because I liked it with the uh, kind of what's going on and it's a demonstration what the immersive reader does if if this was live and I could go there live if uh, needed uh, you click on this the text comes up in a whole different background and it reads the story and you can change how uh, it uh, the pace of the reading you can speed it up you can slow it down well for certain kids and with certain reading issues and difficulties and so on this may be a way to um, just reinforce and support uh, their reading as they're still emerging uh, uh, their competency uh, as readers as independent readers so you can speed it up you can in fact that I know I mentioned this when we first looked at this tool but over a year ago it was actually embraced by the I think that the British Dyslexia Society, can't imagine what their newsletters look like, but uh, as a way of dealing with students who are have you know, one or more uh, attributes of dyslexia with the color, the font, the backgrounds, and so on, because it can be uh, speeded up and so on. The... Other, this is another PowerPoint. Started off with that, so I actually incorporated in uh, those into that to that one. I wanted to show you uh, this. This is OneNote. If I go into my Office 365, I thought I was there. I was there. 
Uh, so I'm now signed in. This is really the killer app or uh, instruction in Office 365. Yes, we have Teams. Teams use OneNote. You can have a class notebook. You can do a whole bunch of other things, but the killer app is OneNote. And OneNote is an electronic binder, a way to collect, share out, uh, collaborate. You can have, uh, in a, if you had a classroom notebook, you can have a um, activity file. You can have uh, like a library of just where kids can pull stuff out. Uh, the other day, I, I mentioned we're starting this uh, instructional technology plan. So as an exercise at a meeting, uh, typical probably to a lot of your professional development is there you had uh, large pieces of poster paper around the room and the group was broken up into four or five different groups and each group went around and were reacting to the, the statement if I can make that loud well there you go these are the statements that have to uh, our goals, rather, that have to be addressed in the instructional technology plan that uh, the district is starting to work on. Support student achievement and engagement through the seamless integration of technology into teaching and learning. So each group went around and reacted to that statement. So what are here are the reactions. But what I was able to do at the end of the meeting I'm not going to write all that stuff down. I took out, uh, let's see if I have it in my, I took out my smartphone. I have an app on it called Office Lens. Office Lens allows me to take, using the camera feature, it's almost, it's like a camera scan. I took an image of each one of these statements. So I didn't have to bother writing the notes down. At the end of the uh, session, I captured every single one of the poster boards for me to paste, and I sent it directly into my OneNote account into uh, this channel or tab, actually the, the whole notebook, and then if, picture a three ring binder, and these are the dividers in the binder. But with a simple tool in your hand, your smartphone, and it's a free app, you can direct anything and everything. You can direct text, you can direct uh, websites, uh, different ideas and so on. Uh, anywhere, here's uh, examples of the immersive reader. There's the article. If I want to ha read this article, I go to my learning tools, I go into immersive reader. I click on the tab over here. This is where I mentioned if I had a blank space over here, I could dictate text in there. This is the same idea as that dictate that's working its way into uh, the other programs of Word and so on. But in the immersive reader, I clicked on the immersive reader. It took that uh, window of text and takes it now if I, if you could hear it, uh, I press this play button. This would be read in a uh, very, well, a, a, an obvious uh, electronic voice. But I can change. Let me scroll down here where there's some act, actual text. I can change the size of the font. I can break it into syllables. The spacing. I can change the background for some reason. This for students who are uh, are have some degree of dyslexia. This white text on a black background is much more favorable to their understanding and comprehension. And you have a couple of different backgrounds to choose from. I mentioned. One of the things you can deal with is I can break it into syllables if they're, you're working on uh, breaking word recognition and so on. Now all the words are broken into syllables. Uh, 
I can say, please highlight the nouns for me. And uh, the nouns are all highlighted now in purple. I can say, show me the verbs. And I can show adjectives. And over here, I can change the speed of the readback. And I can change from uh, male or female. And in some versions of the immersive reader, it will actually read text in a foreign language in that foreign language accent. And it gets into this whole other aspect of uh, that we're talking about with Gene was talking about to translate and so on. So that that is a, a real quick snapshot of the immersive reader. But again, it's learning tools and it's in your OneNote notebook where all of this takes place. And once you get going with this, I don't go anywhere. With, I have my phone with me everywhere. I don't have my computer. But I see things or I might come across an article and something I may be reading elsewhere. I can take a snapshot of it. I can send a website to my OneNote. I can save page after page after page. Here's some things, uh, some tips using uh, use the Office Lens app. That's a link in an article from Microsoft that shows exactly what they're doing. It, one of these, I mean, here's the teacher using his app and he's scanning all of these documents. So you can save it as a Word document. You can do all kinds of things with that. Again, it's a free app. And there's a whole lot of uh, really interesting possibilities uh, with this in the classroom, out the classroom, wherever you happen to be. Gene, comment. I, I just took a look at the uh, bottom of the screen, seeing what time we've got. Yeah, we are starting to run out of time. and. Uh... Uh, yeah, basically, there are big changes coming to Office 365, hopefully, you know, that we uh, can take some of them and learn some of them and use some of them. Uh, there's, uh, I think it's going to be yeah. some it, very, it's very It's the only way things. to go forward with any, yeah. any of this. Um, yeah, and, and uh, it really can be it looks overwhelming at times but you just got to take it step by step yeah. bit by bit and uh, you know these things are, are very you, you can't know, break anything off. download open up your one and start dumping stuff in mm -hmm. it. create pages create tabs yeah. and we're gonna go over this from uh, time to time going forward as this starts to mm -hmm. take over and if you need yeah if you need any assistance uh, there are all kinds of videos and so forth from Microsoft that'll be of assistance to help you with these. And also, if you do need any assistance, let us know and we'll help out wherever we can. And with that, Raj. I think uh, I we're, think we're we, close in. I just, just real yeah. quick show the technology resources for teacher page. There is help here yeah. for Office 365 resources already yeah. built mm -hmm. in where we talk about a number of mm -hmm. these things as well. But get in touch with us, and we'll steer yeah. you in the right direction. We'll address some of these topics specifically in the mm -hmm. webinar. In fact, last week's survey indicated that um, percentage-wise, about two-thirds of the people responding to the survey indicated that uh, they would be interested in a Saturday workshop versus an after-school workshop. Interesting. To get to the hands-on portion of some mm -hmm. of this. So it, it is entirely doable, but we have to start moving forward on the general use yeah. of this stuff before you can expect yeah. your students to, to get involved. Yeah, and we have to, you know, teachers need to know how and need to be provided with assistance in learning these things so they can then use them, yeah. Hey, uh, an hour from now, you'll be getting a thank you for attending. And as uh, Roger mentioned, a survey. Inside the thank you for attending email, please open it up. There is a link and it has a few questions that we would like you just to respond to. It helps us out. And also we will just you know, send the report in to the TRC so you will get credit for, the, for this hour. Uh, next week, we hope your team wins as long as it's not New England. Oh, I'm not are the bills playing? That. I'm sorry. Yeah, well. <laughs> Uh, Anyhow, we will not be with you. I hope I you have a good uh, 
good uh, week and uh, a co couple of weeks. And we'll see you on, I believe it's the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. Even if you are, it's still the 11th. It is the 11th. Oh, good. Okay. And with that, unless you have anything else to say, I'll say good night and we'll ask. I hope everybody has a good week. Yes, please. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks' time. Good night, all. <laughs>